What is an Italian style Pilsner? What does it taste like? What should you eat with it? Where does it come from? Let's find out. A few moments later. Hi, my name is George Thornton, and today we're gonna to talk about the Italian style Pilsner, or Italian Pilsner. We're gonna talk about the history, uh, the, the food pairing, kind of overall description. We'll talk about some of the statistics as far as the ABV, etc., that you might expect with the style. We'll talk about some class, other classic examples to try. And yeah, let's get into it. So this style was more or less invented or gets, um, you know, the, the brewery that gets credit for inventing this style is the Birificio Italiano, this brewery. And this would be pretty much the prototypical Italian Pilsner. The story behind this Pils is that the brewer is heavily influenced by German brewers and German brewing techniques and also English brewers. And those kind of came together to create this beer. And so as far as the German influence, trying to go for a really classic, clean German style Pilsner, uh, coming up with something that had a little bit of, you know, haze to it. So that would put it in that like Keller Pils or like cellar Pilsner or unfiltered Pilsner territory. And then the brewer was also spending some time in the United States and England, learning techniques around the world really. Came across a lot of brewers in England, adding fresh hops to cask. Combined that idea with the uh, with the German Pilsner style and Tipo Pils, or a sort of Pils, or a kind of Pils, as that would translate, was born. And from there, brewers from the United States started coming across this, this beer, this brewery. They were picking up metals in pretty tough categories, like in the Pilsner categories, the Keller Pils, and that caught the attention of many brewers. But as far as the kind of official story is and Italian Pilsner becoming a, a thing, quote unquote, Matt Brennelson from, from Firestone Walker is kind of the next part of this story. He got to know the, the brewer here and started learning about the techniques and really fell in love with this beer. And when he came back from a trip to Europe, decided to basically write the recipe for Pivo Pils from Firestone Walker which is another great example to look for in the United States. Uh, Matt definitely gives uh, Beneficio Italiano the sort of credit for, for inspiring him to, to brew that style. And then from there, it kind of picked up steam. Now to talk about what this beer is, uh, you know, German Pilsner mixed with a bit of like English dry hopping techniques. We should also talk about what it is not. It is not a hop bomb. It's not all about just taking a German Pils and then dry hopping it. It's actually more than that. You need subtlety. You need a little bit more breadiness than you might expect on a German Pilsner. You want a hop, fresh hop character, but you're not trying to go like way overboard with it. And you want noble hop character. Noble hop just means old European kind of old school style hops. That just means hop flavors that are like more herbal and floral and woody and earthy than hop flavors that are like tropical and pine and citrus. You can have notes of some of that citrus, etc., but not like, you know, the classic American Cascade, Columbus, Chinook, Simcoe, none of that stuff really. And as far as food pairings for this beer, you want to keep it kind of light. You know, if you're going in the pasta direction, I would probably think of like pasta primavera, something that's more like kind of veggie and olive oil with a little touch of lemon. If you're going in the more carnivore direction, I would think of things like you know, white sausage, or I would look for things like pork chops, etc. And if you wanted to go for dessert, you know, I'd probably think of a snickerdoodle in this case. And for cheese, I'd keep it things more like on the kind of salty and not, and if you're going blue, not too funky. So I'm thinking like Parmesan would, would be really nice with this. Um, maybe a more delicate, softer blue cheese, nothing too overpowering because it is a pretty delicate beer. So this being the sort of prototypical beer, it's a great example if you get your hands on it. If you can't, then Pivo Pills is a good example to look out for, or uh, Lupulus from, see Lupulus or Lupulo, hmm, from Oxbow is also another great example to check out. I'll put a picture of it here so you can see that. For a German style, a fresh German style, or in this case, Italian Pilsner, we are looking for like that nice balance of hop and yeast and Reading through all the articles and the kind of history about this, that seems to be one thing that is talked about a lot with this style, is that you want this German lager yeast characteristic, 
also a little touch of sulfur, not a lot of like fruity esters, but you want that to mix with this nice, really subtle, noble hop aroma. And that's definitely on showcase here. So it gives it this sort of fresh baked white bread and a little bit of raw dough with like honey and a little touch of graham cracker and biscuits, the American kind, not the, not the English cookies kind. But yeah, you, I could say even some kind of cookie like biscuit in there too. And then the hop characteristic is a really nice like just a little hint of fresh cut lawn. It's got a little touch of like lemon zest, almost like um, um, it'll come to me, almost like lemongrass. So a little hint of lemongrass, little hint of like dried herbs de Provence, a little touch of mintiness in there. And you can kind of keep going. There's some really nice hop aroma descriptors in there. In terms of the beer flavor for what makes this beer so special and so inspirational around the world, it's just got this beautiful balance of malt complexity yet subtlety and this bitterness that is just sitting on top of the malt profile. So it does lean towards the bitterness here. And that bitterness isn't astringent, but it just gives you enough of like kind of a pole and like kind of grassy sort of flavor where you feel like you need to take another sip in order to refresh. So it's really just inviting you to kind of keep going back and enjoying the beer. And you're rewarded each time you do because as it warms up and as you start to really tune into the beer, you start to pull out some of those more subtle like lemon pith or orange pith and a little bit more of those herbaceous notes and a little bit more of the malty breadiness and sort of baked dinner roll. All of those things just kind of keep playing back and forth. And I think that's why this is one of those beers that just really inspired a lot of brewers who appreciate things to be really subtle and complex and nothing's hitting you over the head. Now, in terms of the alcohol and IBUs for the style, this doesn't have an official BJCP category yet. Um, it probably should, honestly, by this point, but uh, so far, no. So it's con it would be considered if you were entering in a competition, at least a BJCP competition, you would put this in 34B, I believe, 34B or 34, yeah, which is like the mixed style category. That basically means that you're just saying, this is a German Pilsner dry hopped. What else could we say about this beer? Oh yeah. In terms of the alcohol range, look for the four to five and a half percent. In terms of IBUs, you wanna go for about 40-ish IBUs. That'd be where Pivo Pills sets in, so that'd be a good example to kind of look for. A really fantastic beer. If you haven't had an Italian Pilsner yet, go look for some of the examples I mentioned. I'll list a few more down below in the description so you can hunt for them. Be sure to like, subscribe. Let me know if you've had any of these beers, what you think of them. If you have a favorite one, uh, I'd love to hear. Cheers.